Jesse Smith, thanks very much for coming into ITMA today. We're delighted to have you here for your edition of Drawn from the Well. And Jesse, just to introduce you for anybody who's watching who may not be familiar with you or your music, or for people who already are, maybe to get, you, get to know you a bit better, uh, maybe you can just tell us a little bit about uh, your background. You're from Baltimore, Baltimore yeah. and you've been living in Ireland. So maybe you can just tell us a bit about your um, introduction to Irish music in Baltimore and then your kind of what's been going on for you in Ireland. <laughs> um, yeah, so my, my, um, my mother plays Irish music and she played for a long time with a fiddle player called Brendan Mulville. So I learned from Brendan. And uh, actually, I was thinking about this when, when, when uh, Liam asked me to do this, I was wondering what I'd do, and I was gonna try and do some kind of a tribute to Brendan, and, and I was thinking, how would I do that? And I think maybe having taken on this, uh, this project of like picking tunes from books was kind of a tribute to Brendan, because he encouraged me when I was a kid to learn to read music and to to f try and find tunes and maybe rework them and you know I didn't do that when I was a kid but I remember him telling me that that was that these books are there with little treasures in them and that they're you know there's there's tunes in there to be found that everybody's not playing so yeah mm -hmm. so you're going to play beside the harbour for us today and you've You've linked it up with a couple, couple of, of jigs, jigs. Yeah. and uh, maybe just like to tell us about the different collections that they came from. So, sure, yeah. Beside the harbors from Joyce yeah. and the two jigs. Yeah, the jig, the first jig is one of John McFadden's tunes. Um, it's called Wild the Potlet. It's in Joyce, or sorry, it's in O'Neill's. And the the second one is one of Francis O'Neill's con contributions to his book. Uh, it's called The Sada Turf. So, yeah, I think they're. The, the, the first jig is it's an interesting jig. It's got a number of parts, like some of those big jigs where they, they have uh, variations within the, the first whatever theme or whatever. So there's four, four or five parts to it. It's kind of a, it's an interesting enough tune. The second tune's good, Sada Turf. It's a nice jig, it's kind of reminiscent of a lot of different tunes, but it's got its own thing going on. Mm. And did you say that um the Sada Turf. Did you say that was uh, composed by O'Neill? Well, in that in that edition of, of O'Neill's, he puts his source next to each tune. He stopped doing that a little later because he, he ran into trouble with the musicians because somebody would say, "You said McFadden gave you that one. Like I play that one too, you know." Oh, yeah. So he did that. I think he stopped doing that for that reason. But it's interesting to, to to see that you know where all the tunes came from. He got a lot of tunes from from. Um, Edward Cronin, and he got a lot of tunes from John McFadden, and it's great, they're almost like copyright marks. Yeah. <laughs>
So Jesse, when you're going through the collections and if you see tunes that are in particular keys or particular rhythms, do you ever um, experiment with those um, facets of the tunes? Yeah, definitely. Sometimes I might play a tune out of a book and it's in reels and I think that it seems too fast for a reel, so I might pace it back down to like hornpipe. Um, those, these two hornpipes that I'm going to play um, are both in the reels. The first one is a Edward Cronin tune called The Minister's Daughter and to me it sounds almost like kind of a, like a Donegal Highland or something like that. Um, definitely not a reel in my opinion. Uh, so I brought it back that, to that kind of rhythm and then uh, I followed up with one of John McFadden's tunes which also is in the reels but it's, it, it may be a nice slow reel or something but I play it more like a hornpipe and uh, changed the key. It's an A in the book and I dropped it down to G just for, just prefer to play in the key of G. And then I twisted it a little bit. So it's not exactly the way you'd find it in the book, but um, just kind of reinterpreted it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's something I think that's like, I, I can tell like, um, say, Patty Cronin did a lot as well. He, he learned tunes out of books and he often changed little bits or um, changed it from a reel to a hornpipe or turned an air into a jig. And I think Patrick O'Keefe did the same thing. I know, um, one of, in my opinion, one of Patrick O'Keefe's like, masterpieces is the, the jig he calls Gallagher's, which is a big, long tune. Um, and that's in the, the Joyce collection. And I can see where he's taken bits of the Joyce version and attached them to whatever kind of previous tune was going on, maybe in the fiddlers or the locale that he learned from or whatever or where he, wherever he was learning his, his tunes. Uh, so he's, he's de he was definitely taking bits from collections and also teaching them to the students. So that particular O'Neill's collection, you've been working with and exploring that collection for quite a number of years now. And do you still find when you revisit the collection, is there tunes that you maybe have looked at previously that, you know, a few years ago that you looked over the page and kind of kept going and then you were like, oh, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that does this ha still happen in finding tunes that you've tried and then you, you passed it by or whatever wasn't striking you for some reason on the day and then all of a sudden you, a little piece of the melody might be enough just to kind of you might change a little bit here and there to you know a certain part of the tune might not really sit well with you so you might change that to, to work around part of it that you do like I, that's the way I kind of approach all these tunes is if I find something in it that I really like that's enough to kind of help me sometimes the tune's perfect um, the way it is and then other times I might just rejig it a teeny bit and spend a, a few weeks or whatever or years <laughs> messing around with it yeah. Um, so yeah I kind of with O'Neill's uh, some of these tunes I'm trying for you are really new to me and others I've been playing for a number of years yeah. yeah, and do you think sometimes is that could that be part of the process of your like as your style develops? Maybe if you were playing in a particular, if as your own style develops, if you had seen a tune, you're like, no, I'm not, yeah, I don't want to play that. And maybe a few years later, yeah. that could be. I think so. Yeah, more appealing to you. Yeah, I think so. I, 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 I think that as you change, you know, you, you can definitely see something in a tune that you might not have seen a decade before or whatever. You know. Yeah. And one of the tunes we're going to play today, you said that uh, maybe is easily overlooked, is actually number one in the collection. Yeah. So uh, what's that tune? That's the Enchanted Valley. Um, it's the first tune in, in that collection, and um, I think it was James O'Neill that might have contributed. I had, I'm not sure about that, but uh, it's it's just quite an epic air. Um, and then I'm going to play uh, another tune from the Joyce collection with it. It's called The Matchmaker.
I mean, the first time I played that, that slow air, um, I wasn't sure whether I had actually heard Tommy Potts play it or bits of it sound like he might have uh, taken, uh, taken part of it and added his variation in air or something. But uh, I asked around <laughs> and I asked a few reliable sources if they ever heard it and they hadn't. So um, yeah, it does have a kind of a, it's in G minor, so it has that kind of darker Potts sound with the, with the air. It sounds like something Potts might have liked. Definitely, yeah. No, when you when you say it, I can definitely hear it yeah. uh, too. It's to be uh, right up his alley. Yeah. yeah, and then the second one, the, the matchmaker is is a uh, sounds like a harp, an, an old harp tune. There wasn't any source in the Joyce collection that he didn't write anything about it except for what a matchmaker was. So it's hard to know how old that tune is, but it's obviously very old harp from the harp tradition. Mm. So another two tunes you've lined up for us today are the Nine Points of Knavery and the Scolding Wife. Yeah. And um, there's been a bit of a process involved for you with these tunes. Well, like some of the other ones, um, I didn't necessarily follow exactly what I found in the book. The, the first one is, it's up high, it's in the key of, um, oh, what is it in? I'm not sure, but it's, 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 it's a fifth higher, so it goes up into the third position if you were to follow the notation in the book. And I dropped it down to the key of D, which, which suits, suits me and my li limited capabilities a little better. Uh, so that's mainly what I did with the first one and little twists and are different. But then the second one is the, the uh, scolding wife. And I don't know what I did with this one, but when I went back to look at the notes, it's just completely different. So I must have just kept working at it until I had something I felt comfortable with, but it's, it's different than what I found in, in O'Neill's. The second part is definitely, you can hear hints of it, but yeah, it's, it's a different version of it now. Maybe I heard somebody else playing it like this, I, I don't know, but uh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's probably my own take on the tune. But more of an unconscious process. If there was changes, it just happened naturally. It wasn't like you sat down and... Uh, yeah, yeah, just kept screwing it up until I was happy enough with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us a bit about uh, another couple of jigs you're going to play today, um, Take It Easy and the Ban Lamona. The first one, Take It Easy, um, is, yeah, it's in the O'Neill collection. I, I heard um, Fierke a Mulligan playing it one night in Hughes's pub, and I said, um, geez, that's a nice jig. I said, will you tape that for me? And he said, yeah. So they played it, and I said, geez, where'd you get that? And he said, I got it from you. <laughs> I'd, I'd obviously learned it one day, taught it to him, 
and ne it's just never played it again. So I re I relearned it off him, and uh, it's a cool jig, yeah. And then the second one is a tune out of the Joyce collection, the Balanamona Oro. It's a song, so it kind of probably shouldn't have, but I sped it up a little bit and turned it into a jig. Jesse, thanks very much for sharing your journey, kind of exploring these collections. It's something you've been doing for years, and just uh, in the last few months, the additional work you've done, just uh, thanks for making that part of the Drawn From The Well series. But uh, here might be something for you to uh, consider. I think it was Neely Boyle back in 1953 as part of that recording he did for the BBC, the kind of lecture he gave. Um, he said in the uh, recording, he says, Speaking about versions of tunes, he said, but O'Neill's, he didn't say, O'Neill's, all those tunes in that book, and they're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you th what would you think of that now after you've been going through the collection? Ah, well, I'll come back next year and I'll have them right for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.